In this video, we are going to be looking at a few formulas, um, angle formulas that you would use with sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, so the first ones we're going to look at are sum and difference formulas. So you're going to want to pause the video and get these written down. Um, so essentially what we're doing here is we're looking at if we're adding or subtracting two angles within our three three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And kind of the point before we get into this would be in case you had an angle in here that wasn't on your unit circle. So if we had something like cosine of 15 degrees, so 15 degrees isn't on our unit circle. However, cosine of, if we change that 15 in there, we could say that 15 is 45 minus 30. 45 degrees and 30 degrees are both on the unit circle, so we would be able to get an exact value for this answer instead of just the decimal by typing this into our calculator. Okay, so if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. If we need an exact answer, we would need to use this formula and angles that are on our unit circle. So cosine sum and difference sine, sum, and difference, tangent, sum, and difference. So we would just plug them into these formulas. Um, double angle formula, a similar idea, um, except for now you're just going to have two times an angle on the inside instead of a sum or a difference. So if you ever see a double angle in here, um, often this one will be more if you're trying to do something like sine of 2x and you have like um, plus sine x. So in this one, you've got a double angle on the inside of this sign and a single angle here. So these are not like terms. You couldn't just combine them. So you would substitute in this formula in for this sine of 2x. Um, then you could factor and continue solving. So go ahead and pause the video again and get these written down. Cosine has three formulas, so make sure you have them all written down. They'll be useful in different situations. All right, then we're going to do, um, let's get into some problems with these, okay? So for positive angles A and B, acute angles, meaning they're in the first quadrant, um, it is known that tangent of A equals 12 over 5 and cosine of B equals 35 over 7. Find the value of sine of angle A minus B. So now instead of giving us the specific angles here, they're telling us the tangent of one and the cosine of the other. So first thing that you're going to want to do is I would draw a picture um, because you're going to want in this sine difference formula, you're going to want the sine and cosine of the first angle, the cosine and sine of the second angle, and they're only giving you tangent of A in the first place and then cosine of B. So we're going to want the others here. Okay. So for this tangent of A, I'm just going to set up, I'm just going to draw a quick triangle here. Okay. Here's angle A. So tangent remember is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is 12. The adjacent side is five. And then you would solve for the hypotenuse. Okay. So you would do Pythagorean theorem and you would end up with 13 there. And what this is going to do is allow us to say what the sine of A is. So sine of A is opposite 12 over hypotenuse 13. And cosine of A is adjacent 5 over hypotenuse 13. Okay. Then we're going to do this same thing, but for B. Okay. So now we're going to do this other triangle that they gave us. So I'm just going to draw the triangle. I'm going to put B here. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, okay? So then you would, again, do the Pythagorean theorem there, okay? So you do 37 squared um, minus 35 squared, and then square root that, and you'll end up with 12, okay? And so now, again, um, sine of B, okay? So sine of B is 12 over 37, and cosine of B they gave us, but I'm just going to write it down again anyways. Cosine was 35 over 37. We could write the tangent, but it's not in this formula at all, so I'm just going to leave it. So now we're going to go ahead and use um, this formula. So one thing I want you to notice is that you've got this U angle, 
and then you've got V, okay? So U is the first angle, V is the second, okay? So here I'm gonna do sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. Then I'm gonna subtract cosine of the first angle, U, and then so times sine of the second angle, okay? So in our case, we had A here and we had B here. So we're gonna do sine of A times cosine of B, and then we're gonna do cosine of A times sine of B. So now you'll just look here to find those, okay? So then I'm just gonna plug those in. So the sine of A right here is 12 over 13, okay, times the cosine of B, okay, and cosine of B is right here, 35 over 37, and then minus, now I'm gonna do the cosine of A, five over 13, times the sine of B, so sine of B is here, 12 over 37, and then we'll just simplify. Okay, so remember when you're multiplying um, fractions, you multiply tops times tops, so we're gonna do 12 times 35, which is 420, over 13 times 37, which is 481, and then um, five times 12 on top here, which is 60 over 13 times 37 again, so 481. Subtracting fractions, when the bottoms are the same, you just subtract the tops. So we'll do 420 minus 60, which is 360 um, with, the co with the denominator of 481, okay? So sine of A minus B, is equal to 360 over 481. Let's try another one. Okay, so this time it's a cosine sum formula. And it, um, so again, I'm just, so I wrote down cosine with the plus in between, so that formula. So we're gonna use what they gave us. So they told us sine of A is 3 fifths. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a triangle, label an angle A. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem you would solve for this missing leg right here, which is gonna be four. Tan, um, and then you could write out um, your sine, cosine, tan, tangent for that. So they gave us sine um, is three over five, and you can pull that from the triangle. Cosine of A is the adjacent four over the hypotenuse five. And now I'm just gonna look in this formula and notice that it's only cosines and sines. So I'm not gonna write down the tangent from this triangle. Okay, so I'm just gonna move on to the angle B. Now this one, they gave us tangent. Okay, so when we're, we'll draw the triangle from this. So tangent is the opposite side. So opposite side over the adjacent side. And then you would um, do the Pythagorean theorem again and solve for that missing hypotenuse. Okay, so we would do 20 squared um, plus 21 squared and then you would square root that to get 29. And then so you can write down the cosine of B is 20 adjacent side over hypotenuse 29. Sine of B is the opposite side 21 over the hypotenuse 29. And now you're able to use this formula, okay? So again, U is just the first angle, V is just, or the first angle and V is the second angle. So when I'm looking here, I'm seeing A and then B, okay? So A is my first angle, okay? So A is the U. So I'm doing cosine of A here, and then B is the second angle. So then times cosine of B and then sine of B here, okay? So this was just cosine of the first, cosine of the second, sine of the first, sine of the second. Then you can plug them in from um, your information here. So look for the cosine of A, which was here. So cosine of A is four fifths times cosine of B. So cosine of B was 20 over 29 minus sine of A was three fifths and um, sine of B was 21 over 29.
then you're just simplifying those fractions. Okay. So, I mean, if you have a graphing calculator, you can just type it in and push math, enter, enter to get your final answer. Um, I'm going to actually just do it by hand. So four um, times 20 is 80. And then five times 29 is 145 for the denominator. Three times 21 is 63. And then over 145 again. Subtract those. And um, so you'll get 17 over 145. And then 17 is a prime number, so I would just check and see if 145 divides by 17. Um, and it doesn't, so then you are simplified. So cosine of A plus B for this example is equal to 17 over 145. Then let's look at a tangent example. So again, they give us some information here um, that the angles are in the first quadrant and then find the value of tangent of A minus B. So I went to the difference formula. Okay, so we're going to do the difference formula. So let's um, look at what we need. So we need only tangent in this one. Okay, so when we fill out these triangles, we need to figure out the tangent of A and the tangent of B and we'll be able to do this problem. So they give us that the cosine of A is 40 over 41. So that means that the adjacent side is 40. The hypotenuse is 41. So we're going to need to solve for that missing um, leg. So we'll do 41 squared minus 40 squared. And then square root that to get 9. And then all we need from this one is the tangent. Okay, so tangent of A is opposite 9 over adjacent 40. Then we'll go to the next um, information here. So for angle B, they told us the sine of B. Sine is opposite 45 over hypotenuse 53. So again, um, solve for the missing leg by doing the Pythagorean theorem. And you'll get 28 for this. And again, the only thing that we need from this is the tangent because tangent is the only function in this um, formula. So tangent of B, opposite 45 over adjacent 28. So then we should be able to just plug these into here. So again, I'm just going to label. So this U is my first angle. In my case, it's an A. So I'm just going to write over this formula. I'm going to put tangent of A. So everywhere I see a U, I'm just going to do A. And then um, minus V, in, in my case, it's a B. So I'm just going to, wherever I see a V, I'm going to put a B. So now it's written the same as mine. So now we can just plug these in. So tangent of A is 9 over 40. So that's going to be on top. Minus tangent of B. And tangent of B is 45 over 28. And then on the bottom, you'd have 1 plus tangent of A is 9 over 40, and then times um, tangent of B, which is 45 over 28. So I'm just going to show you how you can type this into the delta math calculator. Um, so, you know, click the calculator up here and you'll see this. So I'm going to um, just do this in like a couple of steps. So I'm going to do 9 divided by 40. Oh, you can't see that. Okay. I'm going to do 9 um, divided by 40. And then minus 45 divided by 28. And I'm actually going to hit enter here. Um, so that's that top part. Then I'm going to put divided by. Whoops, I got it. Um, yep. So I'm going to do the answer. Okay, that's going to pull this answer in there. So I'm going to do answer divided by. And now I want this whole thing on the bottom, which you can see it, it moved to the bottom. So then I can just go 1 plus 9 divided by 40. And then I'm going to arrow over to do the multiplication. And then 45 divided by 28. And probably you could have done that in one step. Um, but I just didn't want to try and get that whole numerator up there. So then just hit enter. So here's your decimal answer. Okay, you can actually, if you go, um, if you go um, to functions, you can actually push fraction and it'll tell you the fraction. Let me open up this screen a little bit higher. 
Okay, so you can see the fraction here. So it actually tells you what that fraction is. Um, let me just screenshot that so I don't have to remember it. Okay, but so that is um, the answer to this problem. So you could go through all of the work there or you could just type it in like that. And so then there's the answer. So then this is what you would type in for your final answer. And that's the simplified version. All right, then let's take a look at a double angle identity, okay? So this one says, assume that theta is a positive acute angle. Again, we're just sticking in the first quadrant. So given that the cosine equals this, find the sine of two thetas, okay? So you've got the cosine of theta, find the sine of two theta, okay? So I had to go to the sine double angle formula, okay, which I put here. So you can see what you need in this double angle formula. You need to know the sine of the original angle, okay? And you need to know the cosine of the original angle. So in our case, this says theta instead of u, right? But same thing. So we need the sine, sine of theta and the cosine of theta. So we're gonna draw a picture so we can get all of this because we've got the cosine already, but we need the sine, okay? So you need to draw your triangle and just label your angle somewhere. I always put it in this angle, okay? Cosine is 20 over 29, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, solve for the missing leg by doing the Pythagorean theorem, and you'll get 21. So that will allow you, you know, they gave you cosine is 20 over 29, and it'll let you get the sine of theta. Okay, sine is opposite 21 over hypotenuse 29. Now you can plug into this formula, okay, because now you know all of the information that you need. So you needed two times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So sine of theta was 21 over 29. Cos cosine of theta is 20 over 29. And then again, you can just type that into the calculator um, if you want to make sure that it that it simplifies, um, I'm just gonna gonna multiply here by hand. So two times twenty one times twenty is the top number of eight forty because the two is like a two over one. So just multiplying all the tops together and then multiplying the bottoms together. Twenty nine times twenty nine is eight hundred forty one. That does not simplify. Um, so sine of 2 theta would equal 840 over 841. Okay, um, let's do a cosine double angle. Um, so now we've got the sine of theta equals 40 over 41, and we want to do the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, so I wrote down all the cosine formulas here. So now you have three options to work with. Okay, so take a look. Like if we just thought about covering up this u with a theta, so this is cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared, or 2 times cosine squared minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared. All will give you the same answer. Okay, once simplified, all will give you the same answer. So if you look at this, we are given the sine. Okay, we know what the sine is. So I already know I can do the sine part. So if you choose to do either of these top two formulas, you're going to need to go and draw the triangle off to the side and figure out what the cosine is, okay? But if you choose this bottom formula, all you need is the sine, and you've already got it, so you're ready to solve here. You're ready to simplify. So I'm going to choose to do the bottom formula, okay? And I'm going to do 1 minus 2, and then this is the sine squared of theta, so put in your sine of theta and then square it, okay? So this is just from right here, okay? We knew what sine of theta was and then we're gonna square it, okay? And then again, you can type it in your calculator or um, do it by hand, whatever you want. Um, I'll type it in the calculator again just to kind of show you. So we're gonna do one minus two times 40 divided by 41 and then I'm gonna arrow over to get outside of the parentheses and put that squared. Then hit enter, so you've got this decimal version, right? But we need to put it in as a fraction. So I'm gonna hit functions and then I'm gonna hit fraction and then it'll show me, whoops, it'll show me what that fraction is. 
okay? Negative 15, 19 over 16, 81. And then you would just type this in as your answer. I'm just gonna, again, screenshot that to write it down. So this cosine of two theta would equal negative 15, 19 over 16, 81. All right, last one. Um, so if sine of theta equals four over square root 29 and angle theta is in quadrant one, what is the exact value of tangent of two theta? So I've written down the tangent double angle formula. Okay, again, then recognize in the formula that you only have the tangent in here. Okay, but they've given us sine, so we're gonna need to draw the triangle and figure out the tangent. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put theta here. Like always, sine is four opposite over um, hypotenuse square root 29. So you'll do the Pythagorean theorem here. So you'll um, do square root 29 squared minus four squared. And that will give you um, square root 13 for this leg. So all we need is the tangent here. So I'm going to do tan. I'm going to write down what tangent of theta is. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay. And now they want it in simplified radical form. We won't do our answer with a square root in the denominator, but I'm just going to leave it for now um, because we're going to get fractions in here anyways to simplify. Okay. So what we're going to do is plug in two times the tangent of u. Okay. Or Theta in our case is 4 over square root 13. Okay, then divided by 1 minus tangent squared. Okay, and remember that tangent is 4 over square root 13. Now we need to simplify. Okay, so up top here, we're going to do tops times tops, which is 8, bottoms times bottoms, which is square root 13. Then I'm going to do this part first, okay? So squared, you square the top and you square the bottom because it's this thing times itself, okay? So what you're really getting is this fraction times itself, right? So you end up with 4 times 4 on top, square root 13 times square root 13, which is square root of 169, which is just plain 13, So now I'm going to simplify this denominator here, um, and I'm subtracting, so I want a common denominator. So this one's a 13. This is 1 over 1. So I'm just going to make this be 13 over 13, because this could be 15 over 15, 18 over 18, 24 over 24, whatever I want. I want a 13 on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do 13 over 13. So we've still got this 8 over square root 13 on top. And then on bottom, we're doing 13 minus 16, which is negative 3 on top, and then that 13 on bottom. Now we can't have a fraction over a fraction, okay? So we're going to, I'm just going to rewrite this as a division symbol here, just so you can kind of see what's happening a little bit better, okay? A division symbol here. So now I'm going to flip the second and multiply for division, okay? So I'm going to change it to multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to flip this fraction over, and then I'm just going to multiply. So I'm going to do 8 times 13 for the top, which is 104. And then negative 3 times square root 13. Um, this is not a radical, this is, so we're just going to write the negative 3 out front and leave the square root 13 underneath. Then I need to rationalize because I can't have radicals in the denominator, so we're just going to multiply by square root 13 to top and bottom. So on top we'll get 104 square root 13. Then I'm just going to write the negative out front instead of leaving it on the bottom. I don't like it in the denominator. Um, so we've got this 3 here, and then square root 13 times square root 13 is just plain 13. Okay, so this right here is square root of 169, or just 13. Um, and then I think 104 is divisible by 13, so I'm just going to check, and it is. Okay, so I'm going to do divide by 13, which will be a 1, divide by 13, 
Um, so 104 divided by 13 is 8. So we get negative 8 square root 13 over 3 as our final answer. So the plugging it in with the difference formula, not super difficult, um, but then you just have a lot of simplifying to do, okay? So a lot of algebra rules to follow. So just be careful um, that you're getting common denominators when you're subtracting, when you're multiplying, you're multiplying tops times tops, bottoms times bottoms, um, and then simplifying in the middle to make your calculations a little bit easier um, versus trying to recognize that 104 and 39 had a common factor if you were to multiply that together.